guys welcome to gone to series in the earlier tutorial we talked about life cycle methods or callbacks in spring framework using init method and destroy method attributes in springs configuration file in this tutorial we'll see some other ways that is using annotations and using initializing bean and disposable bean interfaces to do the same task so what we did so far in the earlier tutorial we created a restroom class springs configuration file and a test class to test the lifecycle methods in the restroom class we included two methods init and destroy and in the springs configuration file we included init method attribute and destroy method attribute just to let spring framework know that we have written init and destroy methods in our restroom class such that spring framework needs to call init method immediately after restaurant bean is created by it and it has to call this destroy method just before it's going to destroy restaurant bean in springs container and here we wrote our test class to test lifecycle application which produce output like this now we did this lifecycle demo using init method attribute and destroy method attributes this was one approach. Now there are two more ways of doing the same thing. You can use either annotations for specifying lifecycle methods or you can implement some of the interfaces using which you can realize lifecycle methods. Let's look at annotations way first. What we'll do, we will remove this init method attribute and destroy method attributes from restaurant beans definition. Instead, what we'll do, we'll go to the restaurant class and on the top of the methods, we'll specify what we were doing using init method attribute and destroy method attributes in the Sphinx configuration file using annotations. So what we'll do, we'll write here at the rate post construct annotation and here we'll write pre destroy annotation. So what we have done here is using annotation post construct and pre destroy annotation we are doing the same task what we were doing here in the restaurant beans definition using init method attribute and destroy method attribute if you are using these annotations in your bean classes then you will need to declare a bean post processor in springs configuration file so let's do it first and then we'll understand later why we did it. So here we just need to declare a bean post processor. So if you see here we have declared common annotation bean post processor in strings configuration file. Now why we declared a bean with the name common annotation bean post processor? It's because it's actually the bean post processor which reads these annotations from your bean classes and then act accordingly. And by default, these annotations are not recognized by Spring Framework. In order to enable these annotations, you explicitly need to declare this bean in your Spring's configuration file. And that's what you did here. For different set of annotations, there are different beans you need to declare in Spring's configuration file. We'll come back on this when going to other annotations supported or provided by Spring Framework. And in the next tutorial, we'll learn more about a bean post processor concept and its related demo. All right. So for now, just understand it in this way that if you're using post construct or pre destroy annotation, you will need to declare a bean with the name common annotation bean post processor in the Sphinx configuration file. If you notice here, I haven't provided any name or ID to this bean. Why? Because I've just provided this bean declaration just to let Spring Framework know that it should enable these annotations in it, which are by default not enabled in it. And I'm not going to reference this bean in any other bean in this Spring configuration all right so now our project is ready we have provided annotations we have declared common annotation bean post processor which is needed for these annotations in configuration file and our test class is ready now let's run it and test it
Cool. The output here is clearly showing that Spring Framework called init method immediately after rest and beans initialization and it called destroy method just before rest and beans destruction by Spring Framework or in Spring's container. So we just saw a demo for lifecycle methods or callbacks using these annotations. Now we said in the beginning of this tutorial that there is one more way to do the same task and that is using initializing bean and disposable bean interfaces. So we'll see its demo as well here. So what we'll do, we'll simply take these two methods out which we wrote as init method and destroy methods. And also we'll take out this beans declaration which we did for post construct and pre destroy annotations. So what we'll do, we'll first implement initializing bean interface and then we will implement disposable bean interface. Alright, so let's do that. Implements initializing bean interface. So if we see here, it's giving error and saying that we have not implemented the method which is there in initializing means. So let's do that, add unimplemented methods. So this is the method after property set which we have implemented from initializing bean interface. This method is exactly same as we have init method which we just saw. So while initializing restaurant bean, Spring Framework, if finds this method in it, it will call this method immediately after restaurant beans initialization. So what we'll do here is we'll put one SOP, which will print on the console restaurant bean is going to after property set method on the console when we run this application. Now let's implement a one more interface, disposable bean here disposable bean so again here it's giving error that we have not implemented one of the methods provided by this interface so let's implement this All right so this is the method we have implemented from disposable bean interface this method is exactly same as we just saw using pre-destroy annotation or destroy method attribute in Spring's configuration file with the bean definition. All right, so I'm putting here one SOP which simply prints restaurant bean is destroying now on the console when we will run the application. So when we will run this application, Spring Framework would call this method immediately after initializing a restaurant bean. And Spring Framework would call this method just before restaurant beans destruction. So let's go to our test class and run this application. Right, it has done the same thing. Spring framework called after property set method, which is there in the restaurant class, immediately after restaurant beans initialization, and it called the destroy method, which is again in the restaurant bean, just before restaurant beans destruction at the end of the main method here. So for lifecycle methods or callbacks provided by Spring Framework, we saw three approaches. One approach was in Spring's configuration file with a bean, you mentioned init method attribute or destroy method attribute. And the second approach is using annotations in our restaurant bean class using post construct or pre destroy annotation. And the third one is using methods provided by initializing bean interface and disposable bean interface like this. So you may use any of these three approaches to realize lifecycle methods or callbacks provided by Spring Framework. I would suggest always go with init method attribute and destroy method attribute provided by Spring Framework with the bean definition wherever you want to use lifecycle methods. And the reason is if you put init method or destroy method attribute with any bean here in the Spring configuration file. Then while going through this file itself, you would know what all beans you have in your project, which have lifecycle methods in it. Otherwise, if you do it using annotations, then you would not have any information of lifecycle 
for any bean in this file. So you need to go to individual classes to know about what are classes you have where you have defined lifecycle methods. So it's always easy to use annotations but recommended way I would suggest is this init method attribute and destroy method attribute. In the next tutorial we'll see an important concept in Spring and that is bean post processor. Guys, thanks for liking our tutorials and providing feedback to us through emails and comments. Believe me, your comments and feedback is really valuable to us. Do like this video if you really like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all updates on latest video tutorials and programming stuff.